with Vulcans focused on reforming their government and attitudes toward their relations with other worlds. It was humanity who led the effort to build an alliance of planets in their region of space. Yet Vulcans nevertheless played an important role in supporting these efforts, providing a large portion of their military strength in those early days, as Earth had few battle-ready ships. After Captain Archer of the Enterprise successfully mended relations between the Andorians and Tellarites, the deception and hostility of the Romulan Star Empire was exposed, and so a conference was held on Earth in 2255 to discuss the formation of a coalition of planets which might help defend allied systems against hostile aggressors. Planets represented at this conference included Earth, Vulcan, Tellar, Andor, Denobula, Rigel, Corridan, and a number of others. And while the talks started well, they were disrupted by Terra Prime, a group of xenophobic human extremists threatening to destroy Starfleet headquarters unless all non-humans left the system. Yet these terrorists were swiftly thwarted, and the talks later resumed, eventually leading to an alliance. By 2156, relations between humans and Romulans grew ever more hostile, resulting in the Earth-Romulan War that continued until 2160. However, humans were not alone in this struggle, as their Vulcan, Andorian, and Tellarite friends came to their defense, defeating their enemy at the Battle of Charon. Witnessing the benefits of such cooperation, these worlds took their alliance a step further by forming the United Federation of Planets in 2161 to be governed by an elected president and council of representatives from member worlds. Over the next few centuries, Vulcans naturally fell into various important roles, often working as diplomats to negotiate peace agreements and bring other worlds into the Federation. Although headquartered on Earth, Starfleet, which served as the military and scientific branch of the Federation, began to accept members from any allied species, starting with Captain Archer's first officer, the Vulcan T'Pol, who joined their organization after a conflict with the previous Vulcan government. Yet once the Federation formed, many others joined as well, so that by the 23rd and 24th centuries, there were ships with entirely Vulcan crews. One of the most important figures during these years of Federation expansion was Ambassador Sarek, a Vulcan who served on the Federation Council for many years, responsible for a great number of diplomatic accomplishments, including the Kittimer Accords of 2293, which brought forth a century of peace between the Federation and Klingon Empire. Although he married a Vulcan princess and had a child they named Sabak, his wife soon died, and so after living on Earth for a number of years, Sarek married a human woman named Amanda Grayson, resulting in a child of mixed ancestry they named Spock. Although he and Sarek had strained relations for many years, Spock nevertheless largely followed in his father's footsteps by becoming one of the wisest and most important Federation diplomats of the 23rd and 24th centuries. Spock earned recognition early on in his career by serving as first officer to Captain James T. Kirk aboard the USS Enterprise during their famed five-year mission from 2265 to 2270. However, he later served as an ambassador and diplomat, even traveling to Romulus in 2368 to discuss the possibility of reunification between their species. Although this effort proved a difficult prospect, he spent decades living on their world trying to improve relations. While Vulcans lost their way under the High Command, requiring many years to fully reform their society, they eventually rose to new heights of power and influence, even returning to the forefront of exploration as one of the first to travel into the Gamma Quadrant upon the discovery of the Bajoran Wormhole. When the Dominion then used this same wormhole to invade the Alpha and Beta Quadrants, plunging the region into a terrible war, the planet Vulcan came under threat when the enemy captured nearby Beta Z and attacked Earth. Yet an alliance between the Federation, Klingons, and Romulans eventually succeeded in defeating the Dominion to re-establish peace. Although they fought side by side during the war, a coup d'etat on Romulus killed many of their leaders and led to renewed aggression against the Federation. Though this effort was ultimately defeated, it left the re-established Romulan government greatly weakened. Matters only grew worse for their people in 2387 when their home planet was destroyed by a supernova. Ambassador Spock, who was still living with the Romulans at the time, attempted to save them but failed, and so concentrated on preventing the supernova from causing further damage by creating a red matter singularity. However, Nero, the captain of a Romulan mining ship which survived the disaster, was so grief-stricken from the loss of his home and family, he attacked Spock's ship, resulting in both being pulled through a black hole into the past, arriving in an alternate reality where in 2258, Nero avenged his home by orchestrating the destruction of the planet Vulcan, killing over 6 billion of their people.
A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Sir Darren of House Ashford, Fred Heartless, Knight of Iron and Ice, Zong the Black Wolf, and Barachado. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.